Good morning and assalamu alaikum. Today I will talk about the need of Islamic revival in India during the period of the later Mughals. I will also talk about the people who contributed most in the revival of Islam during this time. A comparison of the contribution of Mujadid al-Sani, Shah Waliullah, Sayyid Ahmad Shaheed Barelvi and Haji Shariatullah will be done. When we talk about the reasons and causes of Muslim revival, we got to know that many un-Islamic practices were seen in Muslim society during the period of last Mughal emperor like Akbar's Dine Ilahi, Bhakti movement and many, uh, many such practices. With the increased interaction of Muslims and non-Muslims, the Muslims started following many un-Islamic practices. The change in the culture, the religious belief and norms were noticeable. Mughal rule was almost declining. Muslim society was facing a great challenge, a religious and political challenge. That was the time when many Muslim scholars came forward to show a direction to the Muslims and to make them aware of the un-Islamic rituals. Though there were many religious leaders, but here we, I will talk about only these Muslim scholars Mujadid al Sani, Shah Waliullah, Sayyid Ahmad Shaheed Barelvi, and Haji Shariatullah. Mujadid al Sani was born in Sirhin. He completed his education and joined Naqsh Bandia order after meeting Khaja Baqidullah. He worked to end the un Islamic ritual services from Muslim society and taught them to focus on prayer and obligations. Muslim in India had become so deficient in the knowledge of true Islam that they had more belief in karamat or miracles of the saints than Islamic teaching. In these circumstances, he set upon himself the task of purifying the Muslim society. He was a gifted writer, so he used his writing skill to address almost 536 letters to different Mughal rulers, nobles and other contemporaries for the, rival, uh, for the revival of Islam. Once he was called by Jahangir in his court and he was ordered to bow before the emperor but he refused by saying that sajda is only for Allah and not for humans. Due to this disobedience he was sent to prison at Gwalior Fort, but soon the emperor realized his mistake. He not only released him, but also called him to Agra. Jahangir thereafter retracted all un-Islamic practices implemented by Akbar on his advice. Shah Waliullah is another great Muslim scholar who was born in 1703 before the death of Aurangzeb, His father was a theologian and he was running his own madrasa. So he got his early education in the disciplines of tafsir, hadith, mental sciences, logics and philosophy from the same madrasa. Shah Waliullah felt that Muslims were unable to understand the teaching of Islam and Quran due to its language. So he translated the Quran into Persian, which was the official language of Mughal court. Later, his sons translated it into Urdu. In the same struggle, he also wrote 54 books on different, uh, on different aspects of Islam to unify the Muslim sects. He also pointed out the social evils such as the ban of remarriage of widows and extravagance display at birth and marriages. Talking about Sheikh Ahmad Shaheed Barelvi, who was born near Rai Barelvi and he studied under the sons of Shah Waliullah. He was a man of action, so he joined the forces of Nawab Amir Khan, where he learned the use of European weapons. When British came to Tonk, he left military and became a disciple uh, and became a disciple of Shah Abdul Aziz in Delhi. After performing Hajj, he realized that Muslims are far away from Islam, 
so he joined jihad movement and fought for the rights of muslims he traveled thousands of miles to raise the mujahideen and fought many battles against sikhs and other muslim rivals he martyred at balakot with 600 mujahideen last but not the least haji shariatullah was born in bengal and he received his early education at calcutta and murshidabad he was the founder of paraisi movement and he emphasized on obligatory practices of islam like mujaddid alfsan he started his movement among the most depressed section of the muslim society the farmers and the artisans he called upon the muslims of india to discard un-islamic practices and customs and to act upon the commandment of faith the farais or duties he requested them to observe the principles of faith and rules of sharia strictly and to refrain from hindu practices the growing popularity of the movement among the people of bengal alarmed the hindu landlords who harassed haji shariatullah after his death his son carried on his reforms in a more systematic way it was the efforts of these religious scholars and muslim leaders that muslims realized their problems and set uh, and it set up the concept of the two nation theory which later became the basis of creation of pakistan dear students now you will have to read about these scholars again from your textbook page number 74 to 78 and you will answer these questions question number 1 why do you think there was a need to revise islam in india during 18th century question number 2 who do you think contributed most in the spread of islam in india in the later half of 18th century justify your choice by comparing with at least one other islamic scholar of that time take care of yourself stay safe goodbye thank you